of their owner's years of misery. They say the troubled buildings are riddled with leaks, substandard workmanship and drainage problems. But the developers say it's not their fault. Here's Frank Pangello with all the details. They sold us on a lifestyle, um, a maintenance-free lifestyle. It was a dream, leave your songs at the door um, and relax. They were sold a dream by the sea by one of Adelaide's biggest building companies, Commercial in General. You're so excited. It's going to be a, a great investment for us and we'd get some lovely holidays as well as a property that we could sell in the future. But now their piece of paradise at South Shores Commercial and General's $40 million luxury holiday home development at Normanville is, in their view, a disaster. It's a nightmare for us. We're living it every day. It's the big structural stuff that is the real concern for us. And the big stuff that you are concerned with is? The water leakage. Water coming in to the villa, into the ceilings, into the light fittings. When it rains at South Shores, it pours through their roofs. Windows, doors, ceilings, light fittings, and onto timber floors. Well, this looks like a serious problem, Warren. It is, it is. This is the uh, fixed version as well. Fixed? So it's quite clear that there's an issue with that roof and whatever is up under that ceiling. Absolutely, yeah. This is the, the deck is um, just above this, and the water gets through the deck, it runs straight through the ceiling, it runs into the bedroom underneath the flooring and it runs down this outside wall and as you see um, it's rotted. Warren and Judy Hilden have been complaining to the builders for six years. It's what they can't see behind the walls that really worries them. It's basically rotted away all this skin board here. Greg and Susan Blackall line their floor with newspapers to soak up seeping water. And it's just a nightmare whenever we come down because you know we end up mopping up water finding issues, and it's just distressing the whole time. At Jim and Julie Dolan's villa, the damage is obvious on the inside. Well, the window frames uh, have water stains on them, Julie? Yeah, they're pretty bad. Um, and you can see the water seeping all the way up, and it's also come out onto the floor, so that's all going to have to be lifted at some point. And on the outside, where there are large patches of mould under the pitched roof. And it's right round every side of the villa. And if you look over there, you can see the same mould happening. And we have no idea what's causing that. We don't know what damage it's doing inside. And what's that pipe there? That's the overflow for the um, box cutter that they put in some time ago. The yeah. overflow? <laughs> yeah. It's just going to crash down onto your tank. Okay. Straight on top of the water tank. At least for these owners, substandard work seems to be the trademark. As you can see here, they've obviously punched a hole in the wall and just done a dodgy repair on it. Look at this, Frank doesn't comply, you know, it's unsafe. Victor Stanjo showed us another owner's villa of similar design to the Dolls. Same story. As you can see by the uh, spirit level, the uh, bubble sits right between the two lines, dead level. So you've got water ingressing into the it, framework? It going in and then going to the uh, bedroom. Well, how bad is this? The whole cut for the door handle is too large. It's got a big gap and can actually see through it. At Victor's Villa, light fittings have fallen out, a ceiling's come down, and there's wood right on external walls. Yet Commercial and General's high-flying head honchos, Jamie McClurg and Anthony Catanari, who both have homes here, blame the owners for not doing proper maintenance. There's nothing to do with maintenance. This isn't a design feature, it's actually the running repairs to a ceiling that collapsed. So much water has come into this villa that the entire floor has been damaged. So bad, they've had to insert screws to keep it from lifting. So, what's causing it? Well, the box gutters appear to be the major cause of the problems of water ingress into these villas. This one has just been pulled out of one roof of one of the villas and had a lot of problems. You can still see the water line after some heavy rainfall. And what happens is the water just sits there, more rain, and flows out into the villa. Well, now it's going to be replaced with this larger box gutter. Damning reports by a leading engineer on two other villas seem to confirm this. He found the gutters are so inadequate, they're incapable of clearing heavy rainfall. Even worse, they don't even comply with the building code of Australia's regulation for stormwater drainage. While another report we've cited also found evidence of subsidence, 
it's a design issue. These, these places all have the same design and they all have the same problems. One angry owner invited us to see workers rip out and replace his box gutter at a personal cost of $5,000. While we were there, we could see the telltale signs of trouble on neighbouring villas which have also experienced leaks. When you sell a property, you have to declare if you know something's wrong and we can't. So we can't sell the property. Um, the value is dropping. Commercial and general projects built 81 homes here using four designs. It's unclear just how many owners have problems or are willing to admit them, although some of them have now taken the company to court over the defects in their villas. Your son built these? My son built these units. Oh, his company did, yeah. 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 Bit of a disaster, aren't they? Well, you say that, is it? Yeah, it is. This is Peter Catanari himself a builder and father of CNG's Anthony Catanari. He's often doing maintenance work at the complex. The way I see it, uh, I believe is uh, maintenance. Uh. Maintenance? Mm. But they're pulling out the box of gutters. Now how much do you think it would cost to repair the issues here? Um, we've been given a ballpark figure of around about 150000 as a starting point. For? For each unit. unit. Each unit. 150000 so we're probably talking around millions to fix this? I think, yeah, millions. Owners are also at a loss how the Yankalilla Council has failed them in not policing every aspect of one of its largest developments and ignoring their constant calls for a proper investigation of their concerns. The information to the Consumer, of, uh, consumer Affairs at the time was that um, they hadn't were aware of the issues here. And that's not the case at all. It's not the case at all. Commercial and General Projects is now under investigation by ASIC and Business and Consumer Affairs over irregularities with its deregistration in 2012 in the face of likely legal action over alleged defects on another of its projects. The court ordered it to be relisted. Mr Catanari removed himself as the sole director and was then replaced by his 62-year-old mother, Teresa. In February, it went into liquidation. I scratched my head on that one. You need to ask, why would you put your elderly mother in as a director of a company that you previously had charge of? Senator Nick Xenophon says he hopes Mr McClurg and Mr Catanari will work with the property owners to solve their grievances. These villa owners just want their villas to be fixed to a reasonable standard. That hasn't been done. Mr McClurg has designs for the presidency of the Property Council. He lives in palatial splendour in this gated North Adelaide mansion he built. Mr Catanari constructed his imposing residence at Hyde Park. Presumably, there are no leaks or defects for them to worry about. Nor here, the new police building for the state government. It's their biggest project to date. They see this as a business transaction and they're just playing it like you know, business people. Um, but for us, it's really got to be personal. I put a series of questions to both of them. Mr McClure didn't respond, although we did receive a wordy three-page letter from Mr Catanari, denying the gutters used in their yellowfin design weren't suitable. However, no mention of the Emperor Villas owned by Victor's group. Again, he blames lack of maintenance by the owners, but has offered to pay for roofs to be checked and carry out any minor maintenance work. The weary owners say it's nothing they haven't heard before. A classic case of, uh, of dodging and weaving, isn't it? And commercial and general's lawyers say they reject the claims by owners and say the damage was caused by high rainfall events and storms and that the villas do comply with all building standards and codes. Frank Van Gogh with that report. But coming up next, some irresistibly cute animal odd couples. <laughs>